All right, so now we're going to start on the measuring and locating earthquakes. Uh, this should be page 9. It's the back of the other notes. Um, date 1130. Once you write this down, please flip over to the anticipation guide. Remember, you're writing on the left-hand side to start, the one that says before. All right, true or false. Um, number 7, intensity is the measure of the strength released from the earthquake. True or false? Um, number eight, in order to locate an earthquake, you need to three seismograph readings from different locations. True or false? All right, we're going to flip on back to the notes. Um, a seismograph, I think this is backwards, I'm sorry. Seismograph, um, um, this is, earthquakes waves are recorded by a seismograph, a scientific tool with a jiggling needle. It's actually a seismogram, not a graph. The graph is what you make. So um, these are flip-flopped. Please make a note. They're flip-flopped. Um, seismogram. It's the recording of the waves on a paper called a seismogram. That's a seismograph. The printout with recorded waves. Okay, so this is a seismogram or a seismograph, and you can see it's a graph. It's a graph that it has it all on there. Sorry, it's not the gram. The gram is the machine, okay? Um, and then we have something called intensity. So the next two things, this is very important to understand the difference between this and the next one, all right? So intensity. Intensity is a measure of the effects of the earthquake at a particular location. So this is what is seen, what is felt it's almost subjective in a way so um like it's not felt it's weakest weak light moderate strong very strong severe violent extreme so this is how it felt um there's a feeling to it in the intensity so this is the intensity magnitude magnitude that is the measure of the strength that's the energy that is actually released at the focus of the earthquake so down beneath Magnitude is the focus. That's where the energy is released. That's when that pop happens. That's all the energy, that wave going out, right? The intensity, however, is felt on the surface, like at the epicenter above the focus. Um, this diagram is really, really great. It shows the intensity. That's what you see. That's what you feel. Whereas the magnitude, that is the strength. That is the energy released. All right, so um, the one thing that is missing um, in here versus um, your notes is the Mercalli scale. Okay, so the Mercalli scale, that actually measures intensity, this thing right here. And as you can see, witnesses, they're not always accurate. This is subjective. Like somebody may be like, oh, I felt it was horrible. And the other person's like, What's wrong with you? No, that didn't feel like anything. It is subjective. So it's not always accurate, that Mercalli scale. Well, then you have the Richter scale. The Richter scale measures that amplitude, that strength, that magnitude on seismographs using a scale from 1 to 10. Each number is 10 times stronger than the previous one. So, like, say you've got a, a Richter scale of 6. It is 10 times stronger than the five that was felt elsewhere. 10 times stronger. All right. So each one up is 10 times the one of the one, uh, the strength of the one before. All right. It does not provide accurate estimates, however, for large magnitude earthquakes like eight and above. So here's a picture of the Richter scale. If you're worried and you're like, oh, miss, I would like to copy this down. It is in your activity for tomorrow. So don't st uh, stress too much. This picture is in the activity for tomorrow. And it does say this. Each level is 10 times stronger than the previous level. And this is from the U.S. Geological Survey. All right. So this is something I learned, which is pretty cool. It's called moment magnitude scale. Moment magnitude. So the moment magnitude scale is based on the total moment released. You know how I said magnitude, that's the energy. So this is the total moment released. Um, estimates are about the same as the Richter, but it actually measures eight and more accurately. 
So that's the moment release. All right. So let's go back to those seismographs um, to show how far an epicenter is from the seismogram or the seismometer, the, the station. Uh, scientists need to measure the difference between the S and the P wave arrival times. So when they show up and they're measured on the seismograph. So right here, you can see this is where the P wave starts and that's where the S wave. If I take those two times and subtract them, I have minutes or seconds, usually not hours, but minutes or seconds difference. And based off of that, I can then find the distance. But here's the thing, it's the distance from that one place. And so the distance from that one place needs to be done from three different areas. So we are triangulating. triangulating. So triangulating data um, from three different seismographs using radius of each circle. So like I said before, and you can see it right here, sorry. Um, so the earthquake is 300 kilometers from Boise. So started here, ended here, and they found that Boise is 300 kilometers away. Now from that one station, it makes a circle, a radius around that. All they know is it is 300 kilometers from that station in some direction. They don't know what direction. And then they do the same for Helena and Salt Lake. Now, when you get these bubbles, these, these circles, and you put them all together, where they meet up or overlap, this is the location of the epicenter. All right? And here's a fun fact, this interesting thing. Like, this guy is jumping on sand, but it looks like liquid. All right, so liquefaction, you can write this in the side, on the, on the side, which would be a good idea. Liquefaction is when sand and silk get saturated, causing the surface to act fluid-like. So what I brought up in class is there was a massive earthquake in San Francisco in 1909, or 1908. And this earthquake, people were walking their dogs along the beach. They didn't know what was coming. The earthquake happened. And this liquefaction, liquefaction happened on the beach. That solid sand all of a sudden turned into a liquid. And it's not just there. All over this was happening. People were walking. All of a sudden, they were sucked down into the ground. Well, what happens with an earthquake? It doesn't keep going. The, the waves stop. And when it stopped, it solidified back up. That's what would kill the people and the animals that were walking around because they got sucked into this and then they couldn't get out. They were stuck in the ground and it actually ended up killing them. All right, quiz time. Um, so label this, this is quiz four. I did um, locating quiz four, one, two, three, four, five. Pause if you need. All right, what tool is used to measure earthquake? Is it a graph, a gram, intensity, or magnitude? Um, measure of the effect of an earthquake is called what? Is that the seismograph, gram, intensity, or magnitude? All right, the measure of the strength or the amount of energy released is called seismograph, gram, intensity, or magnitude? Which scale can accurately measure magnitude? eight and higher. Is it intensity, moment, magnitude, scale, or Richter scale, Mercalli scale? Last but not least, what do scientists compare in order to locate an epicenter of an earthquake? Is it intensity, magnitude, distance of PNS wave, or arrival of PNS wave? All right, let's go back to the one, number one. What is the tool used? This would be the seismogram. This is a seismogram right here. And yes, remember, it is different um, on the notes. For some reason, it got flip flopped. All right. The measure of the effects of an earthquake is called the intensity. Oops, sorry. And that is shown right here. This is the Mercalli scale. Um, the measure of the strength or the amount of energy released. This is called the magnitude. This is also found on the Richter scale. All right, 
So like it's the waves going out, how strong that magnitude was. This is 6.3. And you can see the difference here. The intensity shows the destruction as you go out. This one says that's the magnitude. Okay. Which scale can accurately measure the magnitude 8 and higher? That one's that moment magnitude scale. And number five, what do scientists compare in order to locate the center of an earthquake? This one is the arrival of the P and the S waves. And from the arrival of the P and S waves, you can find the distance from the, from the center. And that can also help and determine where the epicenter is to figure out the intensity and the magnitude. All right, let's go back to that anticipation guide, seven and eight. Let's look at number seven. Intensity is the measure of the strength released from the earthquake. This is false. Magnitude is the amount of energy released during an earthquake. All right. The, in order to locate an earthquake, you need three seismograph readings from the three different locations. This is absolutely true. The radius of each circle is the distance from the seismogram or the seismograph station to the epicenter. All right. Let's go to the summary. How are earthquakes measured? Seismograms are used, used to measure earthquakes, which produce a seismograph, which shows the um, arrival time of the S and P wave. What is the difference between the Mercalli and the Richter scale? The difference between the Mercalli and Richter scale is that the Mercalli measures intensity based on feelings, and the Richter measures the strength or how strong it was. How is an earthquake epicenter located? It is, in order to find an epicenter of an earthquake, you need three stations, three seismogram stations to triangulate the epicenter. All right, so that is it. That is the end of the notes. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask, and I hope you guys have a great day.